Okay, welcome to episode one of Back to the Basics. We're going to be talking about using buses in our mixing. This is a technique or a workflow that has been around for a long time, predating digital audio workstations, and yet is something that still is used in every day in music production. And so I wanted to go over this technique, which is to use buses and sends to route our audio into various places. I have a relatively simple mix up and I wanted to show you how I'm using the buses with the sends on each of these channels to create a cohesive reverb experience. This does a few things. One, it allows me to send all of the tracks I want to to the same reverb, uh, which means I can then manipulate that reverb without having to do it on each individual track. It also uh, allows me to uh, be really CPU conscious. I know I, we don't need to do that as much anymore, but uh, it's certainly something that um, in the past we had to do. And uh, in the studio days before digital workstations, we often had limited number of reverbs. And so we were always doing it this way just because of that limited resource. So let me walk you through the process of how we do this. Uh, there's a number of ways to do it. There's no exact right or wrong way. Um, but I would say the typical way is the way I'm going to show you for the most part. Um, we can select, I'm going to create a brand new uh, bus just for this example. I'm going to do all of my instruments minus the bass. Uh, and I'm going to put the drums in this, even though oftentimes that is the one time I, I might do a different one. Although... On a song like this, which is relatively simple, uh, it doesn't hurt to have all of it in one reverb if it's working. So I selected them all. I can You can use the command key to select each of the tracks you want to put in this temporary group, or you can click on one, use the shift key uh, across a bunch of them to select, and then I use the command key just to add those two other ones. Once we have that, where we have sends here, I'm going to click right below the first send that we have. I'm going to choose bus from the output here. So no send is the current choice. You'll see bus one is our current option. It's going to reverb. And then this is bus three, which was created when I created the drum track. It was automatically put on there. I'm not using it. It's um, just inactive for the moment. I can put this into any of these other buses. Uh, we have 256 total buses, so plenty to work with in most situations. I'm going to choose bus two, and it'll be added to all of the selected tracks. Now, Logic, bless its heart, is always trying to be very efficient for us, and so it automatically created a destination track. This auxiliary three, we're going to give this a name, reverb number two. So I can keep those organized and it automatically chose the input as bus two. And you can see we have the same 256. Now the bus itself, the bus is kind of like a bus. If you're thinking about public transportation, you get picked up in a place, the bus takes you to the destination and then drops you off. The bus is that route in between those two things. In this case, the bus starts on the individual tracks and ends up on this auxiliary track. Now, we don't have to actually keep this auxiliary track. It's automatically created. It's one thing I actually don't like about Logic. I wish I could choose to tell it not to automatically create that, but it does. We could delete it if we want to, um, but in this case, we are going to use it. So I'm going to reselect these ones for an, another second here because... Um, even though in the end, I'm going to want different levels. I'm just going to turn them up for a second so we can verify that this is working. I'm going to mute the original reverb and let's actually add a reverb in here. And we'll use Chromaverb, which is a decent reverb inside Logic. Right now, one of my favorite patches is the vocal plate. As long as I go into details here and let's, we're gonna kind of bandpass it in a way, but we're gonna roll off the, the top and the bottom 
like that. Now, because we're using this on an auxiliary track and all of the original sounds are still going out to the output, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second, um, we want the, the wet signal to be at 100% and the dry signal to be at zero. That means we're just hearing reverb on this track. If you were to put a reverb on one of the original tracks, it would actually have a different dry wet uh, setup already in place because it would let some of the dry through so you could hear that and the wet would be added to it. Now, what it means by dry wet? Dry is the unprocessed audio. Could be an instrument, could be the voice recording. That without any reverb is considered the dry, it has no reverb on it. With the wet, that's just the reverb portion, the addition of the space, the sound of the room, and that level gets added in. So we could do a dry wet balance on any individual track, but when we're using this as an aux track with a bus going to it from a bunch of tracks, this would be wet. Good thing is Logic uh, does this automatically, gets that right, but if you're using reverb in say a studio with a big mixing console and they're in uh, hardware units and racks next to you, then you may actually have to worry about what is dry and what is wet. It wouldn't do it automatically for you. Okay, so we have that turned up. One nice thing about Logic, if I solo the reverb, it's just going to play the reverb without the original dry signals from those other tracks. So we can actually adjust that to sound, but of course it makes more sense to listen to it with everything. On a rainy day, in the middle of our May, a journey that began. And there's a few more options I want to look at before we talk about an alternate way of doing some of this stuff. If we look inside the same place where we assigned the bus, you'll see that we can do an independent pan. That means we can pan as it goes down the bus into the destination auxiliary track when we have, you know, stereo destination. We can do post pan, post fader, and pre fader. What we can do with these three things are set what's happening with the, the actual information that's down the channel strip, the, the panner and the fader. If we have it like this, where it's post pan, um, then it's going to do not only the level and this, but it's that means that those will affect the destination. So as an example, let's push play. And I want to, I'm gonna adjust maybe the drums on this right now. Oh. It's everything. If I come to this and I say pre fader, then it doesn't matter what I do with the fader it's always going to send it out to that reverb. So this could be really useful when you're doing something like a headphone mix. And for a headphone mix, we don't want the fader to always be changing what's going to the headphones. We want the musician, uh, and this is like in the tracking phase when uh, maybe we're doing overdubs or we're working with various musicians in isolation rooms. Uh, we want them to be able to get a specific mix without it being affected every time we change our main mix. You'll notice that the little circle goes in front of the actual bus assignment, indicating that it's pre-fader, um, and then the post-fader and the post-pan both stay on the right side. Okay, so in addition to that, 
We have a few other things. Uh, one of them is copy fader to send. If we want the exact mix that we have down here on these, then we can say copy fader to send, and it will adjust that to match the level there. Um, sometimes that's useful for just organizing a quick mix. If we don't have a bunch of automation uh, and it's just set levels, then we could actually identically create the mix to send to uh, a different place. The last thing in this situation would be sends on faders, which we're gonna look at in just a moment. Um, that's a really cool tool. What we can also do, these are sends. This is a copy of what's coming down our channel strip from our tracks, and we can choose how much is going out based on the, the little adjustment rotor here. The easiest way to get this information in a more detailed manner is by choosing sends on faders right here. So the sends on faders, if we power that on, we have to choose which one we're seeing, and that information goes down to the main faders, and we can adjust those and it will change the amount that's being sent. Uh, and so that's actually a really cool way to have a bigger view of what's on our sends. Other programs do this differently. I think this is a really elegant solution and one that works really well. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about then, because we just looked at sends, which is the copy, we can also choose a bus as an output of our entire track. So we could send all of our tracks, instead of doing as sends, we can do them as the output and make the input on an auxiliary track, that same bus, and process the signal that way. This could be useful for submixes. We could put all the voice tracks onto one bus. Let me show you what that looks like. We're gonna choose one and then shift click on the first one and we're gonna change the output to bus four, the next available one. That pops up here. I'm gonna type vocal, oh, just vox sub mix, right? Undo that solo. We could solo this one out if we want to. Uh, and then we could adjust the level for the entire group of voices. We could put a compressor or an equalizer. Uh, we could put a reverb that's just for the voices on here. And then the output of this track um, could either be one of our main outputs or it could be another bus if we have a submix for all of the other submixes. It can get compounding here. We can really build a series of submixes that uh, allow us to group and sculpt the way that we want to. Now, this is not the only way to do this in Logic. In fact, uh, we could look at track stacks in another video. Uh, we could look at VCAs. We could look at groups. There are so many ways to do the same functionality, but it's nice to understand that buses can be used for submixes, just like we might use it for the reverb sends and uh, grouping those tracks together for a cohesive mix. Okay. The last thing I'll show you is the view in the mixer here. We can really use some of our filter tools to see these in a really useful way. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna click on voice number one and I'm gonna go up here to where it says all, that'll be all of our tracks, but I can also do single. Now the single is going to show us the original track and all of the tracks that this is going to. So there's the two reverbs, bus one and two, and then the, the vocal submix with bus four, the stereo output, and the master. Uh, and so that's the signal chain for that one track, which is a really useful way to do this. The other thing we can do is hold down option and click on one of these filters and it will show us all of the auxiliary tracks and those are the ones that different tracks are going to. And so that's a really useful way to also filter that out. Okay, I hope this was a useful way of exploring the buses and seeing how they work, making assignments. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have additional questions or want to do more of these style videos, but I hope this is useful and I'm looking forward to doing some more of these back to the basics.